Holy fucking shit. That is how you end war games. <laughs> Guys, I'm losing my mind. I'm literally losing my mind with how that match went down. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Nash, here. Welcome back to the channel. Oh, my God. So, tonight, I'm going to be, going to be giving you guys the results from NXT TakeOver War Games 2020. The last takeover of the whole year. I'm losing my mind. So, one thing I want to point out, and this was something that I had saw on... On Instagram, if you guys haven't checked out WWE's official official Instagram, uh, you will know that there was actually a six man tag. Um, I guess that must have been like part of. I guess that must have been. Um, I guess that must have been a part of War Games. I don't know, but there was a six man tag. Um, it might have been a dark match or something, but it was it was a again it was a six man tag between all three members of Legado del Fantasma. Against, I, I think, I think it was like Austin Gray, Kurt Stallion, and Ashanti the Adonis. I think Legato felt, I think Legato won, won that one. But anyway, so we kicked the night off with the women's war games match, which consisted of, which was Team Shotzi and Team Candice. Team Shotzi had, had the captain, Shotzi Blackheart, Ember Moon, Rhea Ripley, and the NXT Women's Champion, Io Shirai. Then, of course, we had Team Candice, which consisted of the Captain, Candice LeRae, Dakota Kai, Raquel Gonzalez, and, of course, the Wild Card, which ended up being Tony Storm. So, one thing I want to point out is that this match, is that this match had so many different different combustible elements. Elements, Obviously, obviously each superstar had, had, had their own, had their own you know, unique style. You know, Ember Moon and... And Candice LeRae were more like, and also Io Shirai were more like high flyers, risk takers, whatnot. Um, to uh, uh, you know, Raquel Gonzalez and Rhea Ripley were like powerhouses. It was combustible, but of course, knowing Candice LeRae, she was the last woman. Um, she was the the last woman and in her team to enter War Games, and then um. And of course, too, with the uh, Indy Hartwell getting involved, um, they locked the War Games cage. And uh, obviously, you you guys know once War Games, once all eight women, once all eight superstars en enter War Games, the match begins. War Games begins. Io Shirai never entered the match because Indy Hartwell decided to lock the door. And it was all because of Ken, and, and, and it was all Candice LeRae's idea. Even though that was the case, Io Shirai picked up a, found a trash can, put it over herself, and just flopped over everybody. But even with all that, even with how much chaos was in that match, Raquel, the, the, the closing moments of the match was the fact that Raquel Gonzalez hit Io Shirai with a power bomb. With a choke, I, I, I guess like a mod, um, like a modified power bomb, onto a ladder, onto a ladder, onto the steel girder that combines the two rings together to pick up the victory for Team Candice. Honestly, that was absolutely brutal. That was absolutely brutal. But keep in mind, Raquel Gonzalez pinned the NXT Women's Champion. That means she's pretty much almost guaranteed. To get a shot at the NXT Women's Title at some point down the line, but knowing Candice LeRae, she'll say, "Oh, oh, I, oh, I won the match. I pinned, I pinned Io. I get the title shot." We all know how Candice LeRae operates, so that could be a possibility. That could be a possibility. But that being said, that was an an an, impress an impressive victory. For Raquel Gonzalez, especially over someone like, especially over someone someone like Io Shirai, who is so well rounded, he, she's you know who's traveled the world, honed her craft, and just do, and dominated the entire world, not just in Japan, but also in places like like um, like like the UK, and all over the place, even here in 
in here in the U.S. Um, again, big, big, big congrats to 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 Raquel Gonzalez for that one. Next up, we have Timothy Timothy Thatcher versus Tommaso Ciampa. This was truly no no pun intended, but this was truly Thatcher's Thatch can, or rather, I guess Catch's Catch can. No pun intended, um, because this match was pretty much just pure wrestling. You know, pure wrestling. And just to see who was the better better wrestler, and it ended up being Tommaso Ciampa because he, the closing moments, this was an all-out brawl. He hit Thatcher in the ear with a knee strike, with a knee strike busting his ear open, or I guess rather this ear to be more accurate. Um, and then, and then the and then the closing moments of the match, he had applied a guillotine onto Thatcher. And by the time the referee got to the count of four, he hit Thatcher with Willow's Bell to pick up the victory. And they and after that and after the match, they just kept staring at, at each other throughout, like for like two minutes, for like two minutes. This so obviously Champa was trying trying to prove a point that that basically he you know you know basically what what he's been saying over the last several weeks that everybody has been. Has been like, like what do you say? Some of the some of them out taking things easy, if you will, and he's trying to let the world know that Champa is still here, and Champa is NXT. Next up, we have Dexter Loomis versus Cameron Grimes in a strap match, which started out as a as a brawl. It started as a brawl, and by the time Dexter Loomis got got the strap onto his wrist, the match actually began. And it was an absolute war. No pun intended. It was an absolute war. Spine busters. Bodies being thrown on, you know, being thrown towards barricades. It was absolutely insane. But of course, in the end, Dexter Loomis um, hit, had, had made, actually made Cameron Grimes tap out to his finisher, which is a, which is called which um, apparently is called the Anaconda Vice, but he, but Cameron, but Dexter Lewis calls it Silence, and uh, yeah, Cameron Grimes tapped out, and who excuse me, and uh, knowing Cameron Grimes will probably say that uh, it was a fluke that he didn't that he wasn't ready and. I already know it's gonna happen, and William Regal is probably gonna make make another match. Dexter Loomis, Cameron Grimes this Wednesday on NXT. I'm calling it. I'm calling it. It's probably gonna happen. <laughs> it's probably gonna happen. All right, you guys. Next up, we actually have the only title match on the card. On the card, because everybody else was in was at TakeOver. Actually, except for Finn Balor. Except for Finn Balor, because, well, he made a, he made a vignette saying that, saying, that this, saying that this coming Wednesday, the Prince returns. But we also found, but we also saw a vulture. Which, and, and the voice said, Tick Tock. It was Karrion Cross. Karrion Cross will be making his return. If you guys remember, a few months ago, if you guys remember, a few months ago at NXT Takeover Thirty, I think it was like four months ago. Four months ago at NXT Takeover Thirty, Karrion Cross defeated Keith Lee with the Saido Suplex. To win the NXT title, but had to give it up, but had to give it up due to injury. Keith Lee, Keith Lee, I I, I think in my opinion, I think Keith Lee knew that that cross that I, I I think he he had a feeling that he was probably going to lose um to lose um to lose the title to Cross, so he ensured that Cross won the title. But with a broken arm, so yeah, it was uh, it was pretty pretty insane. It was pretty insane, and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna see Karrion Cross back, and we know 
who he's going to target. He's going to target. He's going to tar target. He's going to target the Prince. We all know he will target Finn Balor and the NXT title. It's going to happen. But again, this was the only title match on the card. A triple threat match for the NXT North American title as Leon Ruff in his takeover debut actually would was would defend the title against two former champions in Johnny Gargano and Damian Priest. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Leon Ruff was way in, in over his head. I mean, don't get me wrong, the kid was good. He 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 fought like like a true champion. But it, it, not not even that that was good enough because t because to highlight some 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 of the, some of the big things that happened, Damian Priest had hit had delivered a razor's edge to Leon Ruff onto the barricade, it completely broke the barricade off its hinges, which forced which br almost which literally injured Leon Ruff or so we thought because he ended up coming back. Into the match, you know, try try to retain retain the title, and then we had what one, two, three, four, five, six. I want to say about almost a dozen, almost a dozen people wearing the costume of Ghostface, literally Ghostface, and the closing moments of the match. Damian Priest was about was about to. Was about to become a two-time NXT North American Champion, but he got hit in the back with in the back of the neck with a steel pipe by another ghost face, which allowed Johnny Gargano to hit Leon Ruff with one final beat to regain the NXT North American title, and it ended up being Austin Theory that hit Priest with the pipe. Funny thing is, we saw him quit like two months ago. I, 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 I want to say, I want to say about what, two months ago? I, I would say, I'm going to have to take a look. I'm, I'm going to go on to, um, to, to WWE's YouTube page on my phone. I'm literally on, on YouTube right now. Um, I think he literally said, he, he, he literally uttered, uttered the words, I quit, just a couple months ago after he had lost multiple times to Bronson Reed, who we haven't even seen as well in months as well. So while I'm going to that, um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I knew that Leon Ruff was way in over his head. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's an incredible athlete, but the fact that he, but the fact that he, um, hang on. Hang on one second. Scrolling. Let us see. If I remember right. I want to say, say it was like just a couple months ago. Because I know that he missed Halloween Havoc. Yeah, yeah, literally, literally, it was a couple months ago. After he had lost to Bronson Reed. Yeah, so literally, it was a couple months ago. Um, so, honestly, I was, honestly, I didn't think Austin Theory would come back, honestly. But, but yeah, but yeah, it is what it is. And now for the main event, the men's war games match, T McAfee versus the Undisputed Era, Pat McAfee, Pete Dunn, and the NXT Tag Team Champions Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan, Undisputed Era's Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, Roderick Strong, and Bobby Fish. Dunn and O'Reilly were the ones that started the match, and once all eight men have entered, it was chaos. Pure fucking chaos. To show off to show off some of the more notable things that happened during the match. We saw Pat McAfee bring out four tables, one with each, one that had, had had the names of each member of the Undisputed Era, and it was bedlam. 
pure chaos. Pat McAfee literally hiding like the bitch that he was. Yes, I am saying it. I am saying it like the bitch that he was. And even that could not save him from getting his ass beat by Adam Cole, which, again, was absolutely insane. Pat McAfee was going to hit Adam Cole with his own move, the Panama Sunrise, which, that backfired. Adam Cole hit him with the Panama Sunrise and kicked out at two. And I want to point out that at TakeOver 30, I'm going back to my... to, 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 the, to the car for TakeOver 30... Adam Cole, at TakeOver 30, defeated McAfee with the Panama Sunrise to pick up the victory. That's what happened at TakeOver 30. Tonight, kick out at 2. And it was absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. But, of course, in the end, in the end, it was pure bedlam. Kyle O'Reilly hit Oni Lorcan with a knee onto the chair, which landed on to the face of, of Oni Lorcan. And picked up the victory to win war games. I'm gonna be honest, this was an this was absolutely insane. Out of all five of these matches, both war I I, I think honestly the men's war games match was top. Li just literally stole the damn show, in my honest opinion, which was absolutely insane. And honestly, this pro this proves that. Beth Phoenix on who who said it who actually said it on on commentary. Beth Phoenix was right. Pat McAfee was way in way in over his head, and he got his ass beat and lost. He 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 lost war games. There there ain't seen more. Which now begs the question: What's going to be next for Team McAfee? Odds are we may we we may not see Pat Pat McAfee ever again. And given the fact that. O Oni Lorcan took a knee, took a knee and a steel chair to the face, and literally injured his knee as his, you know, you know his, his own knee as well. One can assume that Birch and Lorcan may 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 have no choice but to relinquish the NXT Tag Titles and potentially have a tournament to see who will become the new the the new tag team champions, which could very may well end. With the Undisputed Era as the champions, which is a possibility, but you never know what can happen. This this is this is WWE. Anything can happen. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on on the card and what was your all time favorite match. That is the question of the day. What was your all time favorite Takeover War Games 2020 match? Let me know in the comments below. And that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you guys smash the thumbs up button. If you guys are new to the channel and you guys will, and, and you guys love to see these result videos and prediction videos for the main pay-per-views and the takeovers, definitely hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you guys don't miss out on any new content that comes your way. And be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. All the links are down in the description below. And on that... This is your boy Nash, signing out.